Good morning Church! Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat, sa inyong mga tahanan. Muli, nandito tayo muli sa uh, ating mga tahanan upang tayo magpuri sa Panginoon. Uh, as uh, kung mapansin nyo mga kapatid, ngayong umaga ay uh, mag-isa lang ako muli na uh, mag-lead uh, sa inyo sa ating pagpupuri sa Panginoon sapagkat uh, ito ay uh, ating uh, bilang isang uh, social responsibility natin dito sa Singapore, kailangan nating uh, sundin ang mga patakaran ng ating pamahalaan dito sa Singapore. Kaya naman uh, kung makikita ninyo ay uh, uh, nagre-recording po ako ngayon dito sa bahay. Bagamat hindi man muli tayo magkasama-sama ngayong umaga, we know that uh, the Holy Spirit is with us in this morning tayo'y magpupuri sa ating Panginoon in spirit and in truth. At uh, bago tayo kumanta, tayo muna'y manalangin. Panginoong Diyos, pinupuri at pinasasalamatan ka namin, Panginoon, sa lahat ng mga bagay, sa lahat ng mga blessings, O Lord God, na iyong ibinigay sa amin. Lord, ngayong umaga, Bubuksan namin, Panginoon, ang aming mga puso upang ikaw ang siyang pumasok sa aming pagpupuri ngayong umaga. Lord, despite, Lord, what are the, these uh, uh, obstacles, challenges na aming kinaka, kinakaharap ngayon, Panginoon, alam namin that you are with us. And if you are with us, then who can be against us? Wala, Lord. Walang mananalo sa inyo, Panginoong Jesus. Dahil kayo po, Panginoon, ang siyang maghahari sa aming mga buhay ngayong umaga. Lord, naway maging katanggap-tanggap ang aming mga pagpupuri, ang aming mga kakantahing pagpupuri, Panginoon, ay maging sweet aroma to be as an offering to you alone. Panginoon, gabayan mo po kami. Papuri at pasasalamat ang aming ibinibigay sa inyo. Sa pangalan ni Yesus, ang aming panalangin. Amen. Ang sabi sa Sephania, Sing, daughter of Zion, Sing out aloud, Israel, Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemies. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any harm. And at the time I will deal with you, all who oppress you, I will rescue the lame, I will gather the exiles, I will give them praises and honor. In every land they have suffered shame, at the time I will gather you, at the time I will bring you home, and I will give you honor and praise among the people of the earth. When I, then I will restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Napakaganda ng pagpapag pangako ng ating Panginoon sa atin, Lord, sa ating mga kapatid. Kaya, hindi na natin kailangan mag-alala, kundi damhin natin ang pagmamahal ng Diyos at ang joy na Kanyang binigay sa atin. Kaya tayo magpupuri sa Panginoon. Huwag mag-alala sa mundo Say, yeah, say, yeah, no way. 
may saya-saya ng buhay namin Lord may saya-saya ng pag, ng buhay namin kap, kasi kapiling ka namin Panginoon and we know Lord that hindi masasayang ang aming paniniwala Panginoon ang aming faith ang aming pagtitiwala sa nag-iisang Diyos na buhay sapagkat alam namin that you are a God yesterday today and even forever You were not a God created by human hands You were not a God dependent any mortal man You were not a God in need of
blessed assurance Jesus is mine of blood all of his spirit was in his blood and this is my story this is my song praising my Savior
have your bread and your wine or a symbolic juice, I'd like to invite you to partake of the communion this morning. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it and eat it. This is my body. And then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for Jesus who died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, who shared the hope of resurrection and an everlasting security of life now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. We'd like to thank God for digital technology. We can still worship God by giving back to God through the links that are on the screen. Now you can give either to this, do this by either issuing a check and send to the specified address or even through PayLa. So let's bless the Lord and his ministry through our sincere giving. But I want to read this scripture for us. Luke chapter 21 verses 1 to 4 says, As Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple. Treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. Truly, I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. Shall we pray? Thank you, Father, for allowing us this privilege to give off our lives and our resources for the expansion of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome, BBTC Filipino. This is our third week of online service, and we praise God that we are reaching many Filipinos and even non-Filipinos at this particular time. Thanking God for this season that we could still meet together, church without walls, church without the physical structure. So if you are sitting with your family members, sitting with your friends, let's do this again. Say hello to one another. Just wave at each other and just say, I live because Christ lives. So Resurrection Sunday is over. And I explained that history's mega event is the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Some of you prayed to receive Jesus last Sunday. You said, I need you, forgive me, I invite you into my life. Some of you rededicated your lives. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, today we're going to start a new series connected with the year of personal discipleship for our church. The next five Sundays, we will take about five basic assurances, or in Tagalog, katiyakan, that every Christian has. And this week, what we will do is we are going to talk about the assurance of salvation. Now, if you look at the screen, we, you know, we like to purchase stuff. And when we purchase something, we always look for warranty. And if there is no warranty, we are hesitant to buy. So similarly, you say you're a Christian, how do you know that you are a Christian? What is the guarantee? What's the warranty? Is it because you were born into a Christian family? Or is it because you grew up growing, going to church, and your parents says you are Christians? Or is it because you were baptized? 
So the question I think we need to ask ourselves is, are you really sure that you are a Christian? How can you be sure that you are truly a Christian? How can you be sure that you are truly saved? In other words, do you have a warranty that your salvation in Jesus Christ is legit? So I'd like to invite you and follow me to a place called Galatia. It was probably a Roman colony at that time. And at the time, some false teachers were telling the Galatian Christians who, are, who were not Jews that they had to be circumcised like the Jews to become Christians. And Paul wrote to tell them that they don't need to earn the approval and acceptance of God by being circumcised or by doing good works to be saved. That they are saved solely by their faith in Jesus Christ. And the scripture that we're going to examine today is in Galatians chapter 4 verses 4 to 7. Let's read this together. This is from the NLT. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, referring to Mary, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us, his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Now, you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. Okay, let's discuss some clear truth and let's lay some foundation before we unpack Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. The first point that I'd like to bring to you is you need to be a Christian. You have to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Be a Christ follower. If you don't, this is the reality. See, the gospel is so blunt, is so frank, and it doesn't mean words. The gospel says you and I, every human being, is a sinner. All of us, including that tiny little baby on your arms, the elderly person you are taking care of, are sinners. And we all rebel against God and his holy nature. Now, this is the reason why there is corruption, wickedness, sickness, and evil. Romans 3.23, let's read that, says, All, no exception, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That means we cannot reach God. This is actually an antidote to those who believe that man is inherently good. You know, when our children disobey us, we deal with it, right? So the same thing with God. God's sentence to us is eternal punishment in hell. We can't do anything about that because we are all by nature sinners. And every day, a few billion, I mean, billions of people are queuing up to hell. Last Sunday, I said, that the mega event of all mega events in history is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. After dying on the cross and being buried for three days, he rose again. Now those of us who believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ become Christians. And we will have the same resurrected power of Jesus Christ. It means death will not triumph over us because we have crossed from death to life. John chapter 5, verse 24. In other words, you and I have conquered death. And death is only the beginning of a forever life. Hallelujah. But the question we need to ask ourselves is, how do we know that we are all sinners? Answer, we all die. The Bible says this. In Ezekiel 18.4, the soul who sins shall die. Romans 3.23, all have sinned. Romans 6.23, the wages, the payment of sin is death. So the question again we need to ask ourselves is, so if I'm a sinner, 
What is the solution to my sinful condition? The answer, Jesus. God loves the world, God loves you and me. And what he does is he offers forgiveness and salvation through Jesus Christ. And even Jesus Christ himself said, himself said, I am the only way, I'm the only truth, I'm the only life, and no man can come to the Father but by me. In short, you take Jesus from this spectrum. There is no way, there's no truth, there's no life. We cannot reach the Father. And in Romans 6.23, Jesus Paul says, the free gift of God is eternal life. And it's not just eternal life. This eternal life is found in the way, the truth, the life, Jesus Christ. So we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And God will deliver us from sin, judgment, death, hell through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus, there is what you call forever life now and in God's glory. Now let's look at... This particular verse, okay, this one is one of my favorite. Let's read this together again. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life, and whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Let me unpack this a little bit. And, says, and this is the testimony. In other words, there are witnesses here. And this witness is saying, God has given us eternal life. When you say has given, it is actually a present progressive tense. In other words, God is continuing to give us eternal life now. And this eternal life, this life is found only in his son. Now, if you look at the Bible, the Bible says that eternal life is actually knowing God now, understanding God now and forever. And you can only find this in his son. And who is the son? Jesus Christ. So whoever has Jesus has life. Whoever doesn't have Jesus doesn't have life. And you don't have to guess it because John, the author of this says, I'm writing this to you so that you may know, you don't guess, you don't think, but you may know that you have eternal life in Jesus Christ. Shall we all just shout out loud and say hallelujah? So the next question we need to ask ourselves is, how can you be sure that Christ can really save you if you trust him? Oh, the proof, the resurrection Sunday, last Sunday, last Sunday, Jesus Christ died and rose from the dead. If there's no resurrection, I said earlier, we would be so pitiful because the Christian faith is anchored on the fact that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. What does it mean? Many people witnessed him die and saw him alive. He died not because he sinned. What the father did was he collected all our sins, past and present, like sands in the world. You cannot count these sins. And he put them all on Christ and punished him for all our sins. You and I should have been on that cross, but Jesus Christ took our place on that cross for our sins. So the death of sinless Christ satisfied the holy God. How do you know that Christ's death satisfied God? He raised Christ from the dead. Resurrection Sunday. You and I, my dear, because we believe that Christ sacrificed his life for our sins, we become Christians. God is satisfied by this sacrifice on the cross. So he raised Christ from the dead. As a result, the ultimate victory over death is something we also have because we believe in the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. We are victorious over death because we have the resurrection power of Jesus Christ in us. Shout out, hallelujah. So we are to be a Christian. We have to accept Jesus Christ and then we can have a certain kind of assurance. And my second point is this. In Christ, be assured that you are God's child. How do I know that I'm truly saved? How do I have that assurance? John 1, 12 says, 
And Galatians 4, 5 says this. But to all who believed him, do you believe in Christ? And accepted him. Have you accepted Jesus? What did he do? He gave the right to become children of God. If we are children of God, that means we can call the Father, Father. And we don't have a privilege, but we have the right to become children of God. Now let's look at Galatians 4, 5, which is in our text. God sent him to buy freedom for us. In other words, he redeemed us so that we can have freedom who were slaves to sin so that he could adopt us as his very own children. So, this is a teaching on adoption. You know, I have a friend. He adopted a son who is the child of another person. He gave this boy his family name and took him as his own. The boy who is now the teenager is very proud of his adoptive dad. And this man chose to bring this boy into his family. God does that to us as well. But I think the question we need to ask ourselves is, what were we before? Oh, this is bad news for you. We belong to Satan, part of Satan's family. That's what we were. Some of you who don't have Christ, that's what you are. I'm just saying it very bluntly. John 8, 44 says this, For you are the children of your father, the devil, and you love to do the evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning. He has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he is consistent with his character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. In Christ, God chose to adopt us, plucked us out of this darkness, of this family of darkness, and made us his children. In fact, if you look at Ephesians chapter 1, I will not have time to de discuss this now. But if you look at Ephesians or Ephesians, go and do this as part of your quiet time. In Ephesians, there's a many verses that says, for instance, that, you know, in Christ, we have every spiritual blessing. In Christ, he chose us. In Christ, he predestined us. And then many other in him, in Christ, and it just assures us that in Christ, we are children of God. Now say this to yourself, I am a child of God in Christ. So be a Christian, accept Jesus Christ, and be assured you become God's child. And this is my third point. Aside from in Christ, we are assured that we are God's children. Be assured that you have his Holy Spirit. Now, how do you know a wine or a vodka or a liquor is such? It is by the content of the alcohol. Galatians 4, 6 says, And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. So you see the word has sent. In other words, God gives the spirit of Jesus Christ into our hearts when we receive Jesus Christ and it prompts us to call Abba Father. In other words, you know a wine is a wine because of the alcohol content. You know you are a Christian because you have the spirit of Christ in you. So when you believe the good news that Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, was buried and resurrected on the third day, the Father sends the Spirit of Jesus into our hearts and the Holy Spirit becomes the seal of this father-child relationship. Now I practiced law for a few years back in the Philippines. I was also what you call a notary public. Documents would come to me, and I take this gadget, and I put the seal as notary public, and that particular seal makes the document legal, legit. So God sends the spirit of his son into our hearts. The Holy Spirit, the third person in the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is the seal that makes us legally the children of God. 
we receive Jesus, we become children of God, the Holy Spirit seals it. Now, Holy Spirit moved into our hearts, and the guarantee is this. He is residing with us forever. And the Holy Spirit is the proof or the evidence that you and I are saved. So question, how do we know that we have the Holy Spirit? Answer, just a few of the answers that I'd like to call your attention to. In Romans 8, 11, it says his spirit dwells in you, lives in you. Romans 8 says those who are led by the Holy Spirit are children of God. That means the Holy Spirit leads us. 1 John chapter 3, verse 24, he lives in us because the spirit he gave, uh, he gave us lives in us. Again, there's this residence the Holy Spirit takes in our lives. And the Holy Spirit is given to us in our hearts. Again, this thing that is given to us in our hearts. John 14 says the spirit is in you. Ephesians 3, 16, our inner man is strengthened by the Holy Spirit in us. Even in this COVID time of fear and worry, we may feel fee weak, but the Holy Spirit in us will assure us. The Holy Spirit in us will comfort us. Why? Because the Holy Spirit has ministries. I will just do a, touch a few of the Holy Spirit ministries. This is another topic we can be talking about, but the point I'm trying to say is the Holy Spirit is in us, he teaches us, he leads us, he comforts us, he fills us in such a way that we can sing songs and psalms instead of other types of songs and convicts us of sin and not just convict us of sin, it convicts us of things in our heart that we may need to confess to God. So my dear, in Christ be assured you're God's child, but you also have his Holy Spirit. And in Christ, not only do we do that, we can cry, Abba, Father. You know, two years ago, my, fa my son's appendix burst until it had sepsis. Very bad, very life-threatening infection. It did not help that he had a very high threshold for pain. He actually went through several life-threatening surgeries, and many times... I found myself running and crying out to God, help, Lord, soliciting the prayers of fellow Christians. I didn't question God. The first instinct was ran to my father, 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 help, cry out to him. And you know that the Holy Spirit is in your heart because in the midst of deep suffering, even terror, even pain, loss, the deep needs, or even just in simple daily situation, the instant response is to cry out, Papa, Ama, Tatai, Daddy. We rush into the Father's arm like a child running to his daddy. And the Spirit in me sends me to Papa God. This is the evidence that the Spirit is in you. Non-believers don't do this. They go to friends. Sometimes they don't even know where to go. Now you and I are a child of God because the Spirit is in you. You know that the Spirit is in you because He teaches, He leads, He comforts, convicts us, fills us. But we all, you also know because we run to Papa God anytime without fear. And this is my fourth point. In Christ, be assured you have an eternal inheritance. The Holy Spirit guarantees that we have an inheritance coming once the Lord returns. He's coming soon, by the way. It is laid out for us in heaven. We have eternal life in Christ now and forever. The Bible says, and let's read this in our text, to an inheritance that is imperishable, will never perish, undefiled, very, very clean, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guaranteed through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. We have an inheritance. Say it to yourself, I am heir 
I have an inheritance. Holy Spirit protects us until we receive our inheritance or our pamana. Now, how can I be sure that you truly are a Christian? Let's go back to that question. Back to our question that I asked you initially. How can I be sure that I'm truly saved? Okay, let's go back to this. Some products have two-year warranty, some shorter, some longer, some have 15 years even. But you see, in Christ, we have what you call lifetime warranty. And that lifetime warranty is now and forevermore. So in Christ, please be assured if you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, be assured you are a child of God. What else? You have his Holy Spirit and you have an inheritance. You may not be able to er inherit so much worldly things on this earth, but the assurance is you have an inheritance. And the inheritance is it is eternal life now and forevermore. A missionary was on a long flight. You know, the first sign of pro trouble came when it was announced that meals won't be served because of heavy turbulence. You know, that thing that goes down and then after that, it gives you all the a heart attack. Uh, this definitely alarmed everyone. Then a storm broke. You could hear the crackling of lightning and the roar of thunder. In a moment, the plane was being tossed in the midst of the storm. But the missionary looked around and saw everyone afraid, worried, except for a little girl. She sat cam calmly looking at pictures in a book and she was quite oblivious to the turbulence around her. Sometimes she would just close her eyes and then she'd go back to her book. And when the plane landed, after the storm was over, the passengers were disembarking. The missionary, what he did was he approached the little girl and he actually asked her, little girl, why weren't you afraid? Her reply was very calm, very confident. Oh, because my daddy is the pilot and he's taking me home. Okay. Amidst the difficulties that COVID-19 brings to us, or even life, let us remember that our Father is the pilot. He will not only take us home, He will make sure He takes us home. And what? how did He do that? He gave us Jesus Christ. And all we need to do is put our trust in the resurrected power of Jesus Christ, and then we will have forgiveness of sin. And then we will have the power of the Holy Spirit. We have the assurance of salvation. We have eternal life now and forevermore. We know God now and forevermore. And say this, we have the resurrection power of Christ in us. Ask you that. Have you believed in Jesus? Because if you have, this is your assurance. In Christ, let's say this together, he ass be assured that we are his children. And we can call him Abba Father. We have his Holy Spirit, which is a guarantee that we have Christ. And we have an inheritance forever. Amen. Now I'd like to pause this time and invite you to respond to this message. You know, the uncertainties that COVID brings to us drives many of us to fear and worry. We don't know how long this will last. The Bible tells us that pestilence, plagues, or calamities can be a result of sin, or it can be a major sign of the end times. I don't want you to feel lost and directionless. Like the little girl, I want you to have the assurance that Papa God is with us and he will pilot us back home. That can only happen if you have Jesus Christ. 
So if you want to accept Jesus Christ as in your life today, you can actually pray a very simple prayer asking him to come into your life. This is between you and God. He knows the sincerity of your heart. And it's not just a mouthing of prayer, repeat after me. It is something that you really want to do because you are convicted of the need for security in your life. So I'd like to invite you to close your eyes. Those of you who are Christians, close your eyes as well and pray that this prayer will mean something to some of our members in the congregation. Let Follow, repeat after me. Father, I need something more secure in my life today that can carry me through this very volatile world caused by COVID. I need a warranty, a lifetime warranty. I know that's you. Thank you that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I should have been on that cross. I confess I'm a sinner. And I can't do anything about that. Today, I would like to invite Jesus into my life. I'm assured that in Christ, I have eternal life. I have the resurrected power of Jesus Christ. I am your child. I have the spirit of Christ in me. And I know in Jesus Christ, I will have an eternal inheritance and security. For that, I sincerely invite Jesus Christ into my life. Now, hallelujah. If you sincerely prayed this prayer, four things happen to you. You have eternal life, the spirit of Christ in you, your sins are forgiven. You have a personal friend who will never leave you and forsake you. I want to end with this summary. In Christ, be assured, you are God's child. You have his spirit and you have an inheritance. I hope to see you next Sunday, friends. We are going to take up assurance of forgiveness. Don't miss this series. God bless you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that thought my heart to me, and grace my fears relieved. Set free by God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, and the ending love, amazing grace. Secure. He will not shield my portion as long as life lives. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. Mercy
sempre My God, my Savior is ransom me And like a flood, His mercy reigns Unending love, amazing grace The sun forbear to shine But God who called me here below Will be forever mine Will be forever